Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So, we have something new and exciting that I'm going to be bringing to lots of videos coming to the channel. So, I ordered a new microscope. It's an Omax microscope. I got it off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for this video then. Uh, but the reason I got this one was for the camera. So, the magnification is from 40 times magnification all the way up to 2,500 times. Now, you, for light microscopes, you don't usually go above 1,000. And to get that 2,500 times, you have to use the eyepiece. The camera, though, is an 18 megapixel USB 3.0 camera. So the goal of this is that we can eventually make some videos and really neat things and see things moving and whatnot. But just to start with a little simple thing, today we're gonna look at human cheek cells and just see the how well the microscope works. So we need a few things to do this. We need the cheek, so we take a toothpick, we rub the inside of our cheek and we get what are called our buccal cells. Uh, so our buccal epithelial cells on our cheek easily come off and then we should be able to see them and we stain them with a dye that stains nucleic acids or our DNA. It also stain bacteria and mitochondria. It's called methylene blue. Um, then if we do decide to use oil immersion, I have a little bit of that as well. Uh, and then I have a little microscope slide here and then a cover slip. So first step here is to get a little cheek swab. So you just take a little toothpick, rub it on the inside of your cheek there and you just take it and then just Smear it on the slide just a little bit. There's a lots, of, lots of cells there, trust me. Uh, then you throw that away. If you're in a laboratory, you dispose of it properly. Um, and then next spot, we add just one drop. I know you can't see this, but we're just adding one little drop of methylene blue. So not much. You want to be careful of that. You don't want to get it everywhere. It will stain everything. Uh, now we'll put that back off to the side so I don't accidentally hit it. Um, now we put the cover slip on. So this methylene blue right now is currently staining all of our cheek cells, not our cheek cells, but my cheek cells. And then when we put this cover slip on, it's just a little plastic slip right here. We put it on at an angle to make sure we don't get any air bubbles. And then it might overflow on one side, which is perfectly fine. And then that's when you take a little tissue here. Get one. Could have chem wipes, but I don't have any nearby right now. And we just wipe up any excess. Just pulls it through, take any excess out, and then should be good to go for imaging. Because you don't want to get any of the stain on your microscope, especially me. I don't want to get any stain on my brand new microscope. That'd be quite sad. And boom, good to go. All right, and I'm doing this live. I could make cuts and stop and things like that, but I feel like doing it live kind of goes through all the steps and it's not just showing you how, like, oh look, a magic slide appears in this microscope and we can see it. So I want to go through the actual focusing steps and things like that. All right, so I'm gonna throw that off to the side there. We'll dispose of it properly later. Now we have our slide, right? There's our slide with our stained methylene blue. Uh, my microscope is right here to my right. So I'll put this in there, crimp it in, and now let's change scenes and magnify. So switching scenes here, and now we can zoom in. Uh, so first starting with 4x magnification, objective lens, or the 40x magnification here. Look, we can see a whole bunch of cells already. All these little blue spots are cells. So lots and lots of cells. This is only 40x magnification. And it looks like I did get some air bubbles in there. Uh, so that little spot right here is an air bubble. But anything that's stained blue is a cell. So we want to get it in the best focus at 40 times magnification. Now let's go to uh, the 10x objective lens or 100 times magnification. It, does, it is on an autofocus. So, I mean, an auto uh, exposure gain and white balance feature. So now, here are some of my cells. This is just right from my cheek. You can see how fast this can be done. That's one cool thing about me wanting to do it live is that I can show you this in real time. Now, I want to find a good one here because it's, the stain is still setting in a little bit. Um, I should have let it sit for a little longer. But we're trying to find one that has a good solid nucleus already showing in it. So this is the fun part about microscopy. It's where you just look around a slide and see what you can find. 
here this is a clump so your buccal cells are very sticky so a lot of times you can see them clump together like that too and there's the end of the cover slip let's go to the center here let's see that could be a good alone cell right there let's keep oh here's a good one down here let's go to this one this one looks to have absorbed some stain pretty well. So you want to center it. And now let's go to 400 times magnification or the 40x objective lens. Uh, so there we're centering it. Let's see if we can adjust the focus just a little bit here. Mm, I don't know. That one doesn't have a nice little nucleus to it. Let's go back to 100 and find one with nucleus is staining. So like I said, this is still, the stain is still absorbing in and staining the DNA as this is going through. So it does take a little bit of time. Could be a good one up there. You gotta remember some of these fold on themselves too. So they're not, I mean, sometimes we might be used to seeing the stereotypical cell, nice, beautiful, round cell with a nucleus in the middle. Not all of our cells don't behave like that. Cells all have distinct shapes to them and distinct structures. But these are indeed buccal cells. Just trying to find one that's absorbed a lot of stain and looks good. Let's change the amount of light coming through, see if that changes the structure at all. Oop, came out of focus a little bit when we did that. All right, there's a good focus. And this is one thing I wanted to show too, just how you just slowly move around the sample, trying to look for the best part. You can't just look at the first part and find your perfect image and move on. You have to look around the whole sample and see what's all floating around there. Because you might take an image of something that's not the best representation of what you want to find on that slide. So take time and enjoy the sample prep. Let's, let's zoom in to some of these and see if we can make out some more structure. Let's focus a little, little region here. And now let's go back up to 400 times magnification. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So up there is a clump of cells. Change the focus just a little bit here. Ooh, that's cool. There's a decent one. So in there you can see the nucleus. So if we zoom in here, right there is the nucleus of that cell. Kind of neat. There's still some, so you see some movement right there. Maybe, so this also stains bacteria. So there could be little bacteria moving around in there as well. Ooh, I like this one. Let's get this one in focus. Yeah, this is the, see, look, you spend the time and look, you eventually find something that looks really good. So there is a nice looking mammalian cell has another cell right on top of it. So, right there it is. Now there's all these other pigments in there too. That could be a couple different things. There could be bacteria around the cell and on top of it. Could also stain some mitochondria. So this stains all nucleic acids. So bacteria have nucleic acids, mitochondria have their own nucleic acids as well. And I'm sure different structures, structures will appear if we would let this stain sit a little longer. Now, one thing I wanna do here, I wanna make a little stacked images. So. Uh, I've been playing with this program here, and there's this thing called EDF. So this creates a stacked image. So as I change the fine focus here, you can see how we're looking at a different depth of that sample. So here, we want to start this, start at the base, and then we slowly work our way up through the sample, and you take an image, every little change in fine focus. And then we'll put all, the program throws all these images together then. Oh, you actually can't see this window pop up. There's a window up, I'm clicking capture every second here. And then 
out of focus. So we took 14 images as we went through that. Let's go back into focus here. And then uh, I'll go through this now and stack these together. You can't see it right now. There's a progress bar moving right here. And then it'll show the stacked image where you can see a lot more the depth of the structure. And it's really neat. So let's see how this turned out. Oh, really cool. So here you can kind of see the whole depth of that sample then. Super, super cool. I like that. Um, so yeah, example of stacking image. So right there in the middle, so there's another little spin, um, pinch cell up here, but this is the main cell I'm looking at. So that right here is the phospholipid membrane going around the outside. Right here is the cytoplasm. Some of these are probably little organelles or bacteria stained. Then right here, this is the nuclear envelope, and inside is the nucleus. There's all the packaged DNA. That's why it's the darkest blue. Whenever you're looking at methylene blue stained samples, it stains nucleic acids. So that's what you're focused on. It's a very simple stain to see nucleic acids. Now, I do want to explore one more thing today, and I want to use oil immersion and see if we can make out any other structures. Um, I'm gonna move around a little bit here on this sample because with oil immersion, we can actually see bacteria because bacteria should be stained here as well. So being a cheek cell, you have a lot of bacteria in your mouth, whether you know it or not. I'm sure you don't wanna know it, but you do. You have a ton of little bacteria surviving in there. You have a little microbiome in your mouth. You know, yeah, let's let's zoom into this cell here at 100 times magnification. So for oil immersion, I know I'm not showing the microscope. Whenever you use a hun the 100 times objective, you have to use oil. So you move it to the middle, and then here's my little oil dropper. You add one little drop of oil to your slide. Boom, one drop of oil, not an air bubble in that oil. You then move to the 100X objective and then you bring the stage back up and then you wait for it to connect. So we form a little connection between the two. And then you slowly change the focus until what you wanna see comes into focus. So that oil is very important because it prevents light scattering and focuses the light. So you can focus much better. Now we might not get a good oil sample. Going the wrong way. That would make sense of why it's not coming into focus. Now all those spots you see, that's, I think I gotta clean the camera. It just came out of the box, so. Okay, we see the blue structure coming in. So very, very fine changes of the fine focus now as we try to get this structure to come in. Sometimes it's hard to focus large structures here. So there, ooh, look at that. That's cool. So this is the cell at 100 times magnification. So you can move this around a little bit. Yeah, you see when I move it, there's those spots that don't move. I have to uh, see if I can clean it. Looks like there might be some dust from the manufacturer. Yeah, this is the first time using this microscope. Uh, I used it on stream last night. So first time making a video with it. And actually, I didn't do much oil immersion uh, as well. But all these little spots right here, they could be mitochondria. They could be different bacteria. Anything that could have nucleic acids. So really, really neat. Uh, but it does make out the cell very well. It does make out the nucleus very well. And then you can't really identify the individual structures inside and outside unless you do more differential staining for the bacteria and so forth. Um, but look, I think we can make out the rough endoplasmic reticulum right here. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum is studded with ribosomes. So ribosomes are made of RNA, which is a nucleic acid. So this could be the rough ER right there. That'd be, that's neat. If that's, yeah, I feel like that's what that is. That's cool. So that's where a lot of proteins are being made, but to make proteins requires ribosomes. Yeah, I think that is that. That's neat. You can make out so many neat stuff here. I can't wait to use this microscope more. We're gonna be looking at pond water, um, 
probably insects, all sorts of stuff I come across. I have a whole bunch of slide samples. So the main reason for this is for online teaching or um, anatomy and physiology and looking at histology of different tissue types. So you might be seeing some of those videos coming in as well. I just wanted to make a little quick video here going over just simple use of it. So this is my cheek cell. Inside that cheek cell is all the DNA that makes me who I am, right in there, right there. All that little spot there holds all the information that decides what I look like, who I am, and what I could pass to my offspring. So really, really fascinating when you think about it. It's really cool. So when you do that 23andMe thing, you take a, you know, you take a spit sample, a cheek cell swab, you put it in the thing, and you send it back. You're sending them this. And then it can take that and then figure out where you're from and you know what sequences of your DNA match with other areas of the world. Super, super cool. So I just wanted to show this to you all and how awesome it is to play with microscopy and how we can see the microscopic world now. And you're gonna be seeing a, like more of these videos on stream. But that's all I have for today. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to look at in the microscope. Let me know too. Also, I just want to welcome all the new friends to the channel. That one coronavirus video I made kind of got a lot of comments and views. I think it's over 200,000 now, which is just wild. My videos usually get like 20 to 100 views. So if you are new to the channel, I'd like to welcome you. Feel free to ask questions. I try to answer as many questions as I can. I am not a medical doctor. I have my PhD in uh, biological sciences and, I'm in, and I am a professor. So no medical advice is ever given on my channel. Just as a heads up, I'm trying to stay up to date on the coronavirus research as much as possible, but I'm learning that everything changes, so it's best to wait to find out. And I don't want to just be making videos to make videos. I want them to be accurate. Like that blood typing video was informative, and I kind of did it for an introduction to blood typing and the different blood types, and I just talked about that paper as an aside, but the paper was pretty meaningless in the end. And it got a lot of comments about that, and you know, there's a lot of answers we don't know. So... We'll see how the coronavirus videos go, but if you are new again, I'd like to welcome you and feel free to ask questions away. If I don't know the answer to the question, I'm not going to answer or make up an answer. I'll say, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, but yes, with that, I hope you all have a great day uh, and stay safe out there. And of course, wash your hands and all that good stuff. And all right, yeah, so bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>